Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh, and today we're going to be checking out the Ricky Gervais Show Season 2, Episode 1, um, Clive Warren. So guys, I've been hearing a lot of good things about Season 2. A lot of people say it takes off and gets better and better as it goes, so I'm really excited to jump into this season, and I've heard the same thing about Idiot Abroad, so that's exciting. So guys, please continue to put um, your recommendations below, because all our videos are based off of your recommendations and comments, and if you're subscribed, we check out those comments and recommendations first. Um, also, guys, going forward with the Ricky Gervais show and the uh, Idiot Abroad, I'm going to be doing uploading those Monday through Friday because I have so many hours picking up at work and like things are getting more more people calling off because of what's going on and stuff. So it means managers have to pick up the slack, so I'm going to be working a lot more. So I, I want to give myself at least that window of um, room. So I'm going to be doing, instead of doing seven days a week, it'll be five days a week. So that's just my update for you guys. So let's jump into it. And if I can squeeze in another one, I will. So just let you know that. Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, everyone knows over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project hasn't been my own career, it's been Get Carl Famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald-headed mank twat. Uh, well, <laughs> let me tell you now, Rick, I've been out and about, and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkington got a head like a fucking orange. Well, I've and I've been... had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate... In what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkerton? We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and um, had a meeting. And uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action? <laughs> Thriller? Whatever. Because you can provide any of it. I love that, that he's playing it cool, like, <laughs> you've come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Carl Pilk, the movie doctor, what do you need, Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always by him. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, don't yeah. they? Just, just so, so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when if you just randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that. Talk. That that to me is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right, it doesn't work the same. Just just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking. And eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, so so anyway. Aristotle, he said, sit down, I've got an idea for you. Uh, Aristotle said, Plato, I would go, right, just keep talking and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that, who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more... It's building. Right, okay, so who's did you say? Who'd you say? So I said, right, I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> I would say I don't know who Clive Warren is. The one who was in Closer. <laughs> Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Oh. Right, all right. Did they look I at you like a fucking Clive. idiot? <laughs> <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? Wait, uh, he, he must be amazing. Yeah, he's got Clive Warren. Get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's got Get Clive me Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca de Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca De Mornay. But hang on a minute, you could have. You could have any <laughs> film star. This is your fantasy <laughs> casting, and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or on the film for 10 years. <laughs> oh, God. Why didn't oh. you choose, you know, uh, <laughs> someone who existed? <laughs> or someone who's oh, a big star? Oh, God. Okay. Clive Warren. <laughs> oh, God. So, gosh. anyway, starts off... <sighs> And the people, you know, you're seeing into their lives from, yeah. like, the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. You know, they're going about the day. They're having the breakfast. They're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, She's like, love you and all that. Yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's they're dead. <laughs> I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't doesn't... got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't. If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. <laughs> I think I do. Carry on. So he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yes. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, doctor says Clive's dead. Who's playing the doctor? 
Jack Nicholson house. Um, sort of. Uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the 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 old the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> he says, "Your husband's dead." She's like, "Oh God." What happens then is he says, "But listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out." Right. Right. And, and and a fact that I'd read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read a fact. thing about how the brain can it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain Some of on us half. Have. So this is this was in my mind still. Well half your mind, yeah. So I said what happens is Morgan Freeman says, been working on this. You can run you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you oh, think Oh, he's, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but he, he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. no, so, no, no. He's gone. No, no, hit no. by a bar. <laughs> yeah, no, he's dead. <laughs> if the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, no, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, no, dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're not dead. Coma. No, they come out of comas, don't All they? All right, then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. So change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on, though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely going to die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? what? They do that. What? <laughs> what, 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 what? A brain transplant? No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. like, if anything happens to me... No, no, no. There's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. <laughs> right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive. And it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you cord. can link it up to the eyes and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. <laughs> Imagine a, a team full of doctors going, well, we're going to try and do a brain like Carl. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> then what happens is they say do you want half of his brain in your head half she's, of his brain she in said, her head she says definitely not I'm having you struck off she starts screaming she calls the police he gets arrested yeah but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff <laughs> yeah but he's only in a coma yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. It's right. like, look, you know, what what we're going to do here? We can either turn the switch off, yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would but, you? So, why? so what he does? So what they do then? They're going to take half his brain, half of his brain, take it out it, half of hers, pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. But hold on. Well, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay. Okay. Sorry. What happens is he, he explains all this. So I mean, this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film. But I'm just rushing. I, you, I just rushing switched off. Now. But yeah. No, you wasn't. This this bit would have you. Mm. So what? Well, what, I'd have actually left when I I wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so <the> thing is, <laughs> she's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, "Why would I do that, Doctor?" Mm. And uh, he goes, "Well, what?" will happen is he's gone but you'll you'll have his thoughts so in the morning when you say oh, i don't know what to have will they have cornflakes is better the brain will sort of say have a wheat a bit have shredded wheat or yeah. whatever. and she's like oh yeah good idea sorry sorry so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes yeah so the thought... <laughs> what do you mean, yes? So that's it, yeah. is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Oh, wait a minute, this is only Act that's, 1. That's just the first bit. Everything's going well. She so, has it done. So what is... What, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone. Yeah. But, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is it's all going well at the beginning. She's So she can't decide what so, to so wear. She's got, he, so she's had it. half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. OK? And, and Clive Warren's uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round... Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. 
No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital, yeah. and she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of... Uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, right in his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? <laughs> well, I would say it matters because yes. otherwise, yes, yeah. it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the point is... of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. and Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's," right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me sort of going, oh, you never guess what I've just thought about or whatever. I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But Carl, like the rest it. of your body is sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If when, when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I can also I... categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you love and that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! I, I, I don't know! know. <laughs> it's madness! I don't think it's it's madness! madness. Alright, alright, alright. So, tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Oh, no. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. Yeah, that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah. Can we do lunch? Um, there may be, like, at the funeral, because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have, like, a funny bit where they stood around the grave and, like, there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, why is she laughing? Yeah. And she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, look at her head. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Looks like Stuff a on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> Little cameo for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, oh, it's quite funny, this. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah. you hit them hard. <laughs> it's the most, oh, it is the most ludicrous idea for film <laughs> I've ever heard. Oh, it's, oh, the, but... it's the maddest. <laughs> It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental have to case. Say, though, right, I have to say though, I am hooked now. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is, <laughs> she hears the voice go, "Leslie, where are you?" Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No, no. So she's thinking, "Who's Leslie?" Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, "Who's Leslie?" <laughs> He's going, "Oh." So he's he's thought, "Hang on, I've let something slip." I've here. let something slip. So she's going, "Answer me." Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. Right. So, He's, for, he was having an affair. This is this is the thing. So she's trying to hunt down Leslie. Leslie, and he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know, we your backs. So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got, she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie, or it's is it another a woman? Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone. What would sort is. of happen is... Oh, yeah, because we, we don't want to ruin it for them, because this will yeah. be, be filling the multiplexes in no time. Yeah. No, it's, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in the head. But listen, let's I just get Hang on a sec, though, Carl. I don't... Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening on. Come on, what's the on end? waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right, so what I said was, <laughs> maybe what happens is his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right, how it's now? What? How is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's His taking brain, over. That gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he <laughs> overpowers her. So she is now. A lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think, hold on, why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. These re relationships, it's the love of two brains. Right, OK, again, can That's anyone out there, line. can we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about... Cooked. Eve likes I love a food cook. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, wait a minute, Clive Warren on this food cook. Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm I mean going to turn into a lesbian. People, Shredded wheat. People <laughs> like what they like. And it's Ooh. the same way, like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman and then is found out that she's got a twin sister 
and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that... When a cat dies, you buy another one. <laughs> it's the same thing. You want that same... Yeah, but you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin <laughs> scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, has there ever been one where um, it's a twin boy and girl? Go, well, I was going out with her, but, I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs, now I like cock. <laughs> this is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks oh, enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't. <laughs> Poor Carl. That was a terrible movie idea, though. <laughs> I will watch it if it came out, though. If somebody decided to make one, I'll still watch it just because it's so goofy. It's one of those movies that's so bad it's good. Extracts from his famous diary. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock and they're trying to hide under it. <laughs> Carl, well, you are it? a maniac. It's You're... just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? Oh. No! Why does that work? Because <laughs> there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, right, OK, read on. I've heard that a lot of people go camping in Australia, which I think's mental. If I was to fly all that way, I'd want a decent bed. Mm. Plus, I wouldn't be camping in a place where there are killer spiders wandering around. I agree. Yeah. I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was all a bit of a nightmare, cos I was going with my mate. And uh, he said he knew someone who knew knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, who had a bit of land in the garden? What's the point, though, in it? You know, what's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of like a spa down the road and like a pub? no? Because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, <coughs> uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have Getting for like, when they have it, parties yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land... Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, ..said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> so now you're stuck in the middle of a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. Well, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of keeping on the beach. But, uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. So we oh, thought nice. that's the place to go. Oh, yeah, no, the municipal well, that, tip. What was it? Was it was it chemical waste or just like you know, no, just, um, coke cans just and syringes stuff. and? Oh, uh, but, but listen, though, you've got to think true. about that. Rusty, if there's, some, what's rusty? <laughs> if there's rubbish there, <laughs> it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like it's a way. That's like a little tip of. So you um, could have slept in a public lavatory. Yeah. Yeah. This one's nice. What is covered in shit? It means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> so that's that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there. And then <laughs> what was annoying is. He puts down the tent. We, uh, we, what's the name? We, uh, it was already up. It, it was already up. The they carried it all the way there and they let's pack it down. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was. Soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, I saw the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday makers, they uh, uh, they started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near. Look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah, near, near the nappies. And um, they offered us some sausages. All oh, right. My mates said, "Oh, ignore them. That's like code for uh, swingers." What? No. What? So there were some people. Cooking some sausages, yeah. saying, would you like a sausages? We've made too much. And you it's said, no, that's thing. code don't for swinging. Don't talk to strangers. It's like we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone, you know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And so, then uh, so you know but, it. but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about 45. Who are they, that? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? No, I mean, you, you say, right, I want the bald one, love. <laughs> if it's like wife swapping, should, should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't, I don't know all the rules and that, but uh, 
He's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of I said, don't believe sausages is a code, <laughs> a code for swingers. <laughs> because eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, well, get your pants off, and they go, well, we just have some sausages. They go, oh, this isn't working, this code. But why, would, be, code. why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. Makes you wonder. We don't, let's not trust these people. Let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, that was the camping. <clears throat> September 30th. Going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> We went to try and find a supermarket. So Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh, yeah. I bought a fan to put in our room to drown out the sound of the mopeds. I've heard Wayne Rooney does the same thing with a vacuum cleaner. What? If you've just got a noise... Um, that's constant. It makes you nod off. And it drowns out every other background noise. So all you've got is, like, if it's a vac, it's just... And if that's constant for, like, all night, mm. you just nod People off. People next door going, they've got their vacuum cleaner on again. Go on, poke, poke the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that's how nuclear wars start. <laughs> yeah. The white noise thing is true. I sleep with a fan every night. Not directly on me, but it drowns out all the outside noise. Cars, no, like horns blowing, like cars driving by loud, loud music. Consistent noise. Keeps you asleep. Trust me. And trust Carl. <laughs> it works. Doesn't work. We Ear watched... Plugs. Earplugs. Drown out everything. I tried them. I didn't like it, did I? Why yeah, not? Because I could hear my heartbeat. <laughs> Such a strange little creature. <laughs> oh. Didn't do much this morning. Hear my heart Just beat. sat by the pool, saving insects that flew into it. <laughs> I'm gonna die like <laughs> fucking Noah. Stop. That's right. <laughs> How were you like, saving them? Did you wait for them to hit the water, then fish them out, or you grabbed oh, them in the air? Stuck my finger on the top. They grabbed on, <laughs> lifted it off. And what? When it like a, some sort of. Insect lifeguard, you'd see someone land and they go, Right, that's me, dan, da, dan, dan, da, 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 and you'd go in there. But it's hard to turn a sort of a blind eye to stuff like that because you know that's something you know you're witnessing death. And if you can save something, you do, don't you? You do your bit. And at night, I'd sort of think, Have they learnt the lesson or will they be back and will they be dead in here tomorrow? But if they can get an extra day, I've done my bit. I can't do more than that. I'm on holiday. Do your bit. I'm lucky enough to see the world. Do your bit. <laughs> I love it. I did my bit. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he was running around saving flies and things. It's just something... There's something so sort of... Beatle. <laughs> an old lady drowned. <laughs> yeah. While he was saving a beetle. <laughs> uh, I think everything will make a good shirt, but I think that's a... Do your bit. To save the world. That'd be a good show. <laughs> oh, man. That was good. I agree about the fan. The, like, having a consistent white noise helps you sleep. That's how I've been sleeping for years. Um, I've tried noise plugs, all that jazz. What I used to do was play um, music that always had a consistent level. Because, you know, some songs go up and down and up and down. Like, um, more like light music. I would play that kind of stuff to help me go to sleep. And... Um, I would wear, like, I used to wear headphones and, like, later on learn it's freaking bad for your ears, of course. So there was all this stuff because the smallest thing will wake me up and keep me awake. I've always had a hard time sleeping. So, like, if I hear, like, a, a dog barking outside after I fell asleep for about an hour, the, that bark will, like, shock me awake and I'm just stuck awake. So I learned, like, about, uh, like, uh, having a fan or something like that because you have that consistent noise and all the other stuff just doesn't make it through it. You just have a fan blaring. The fan keeps going. You knock out. I agree with him 100%. I don't think I can do a vacuum. That's just insane. But fan definitely or a, or an air conditioner. Only thing my air conditioners are, like, you know, when it gets to the temperature you have it set to, the compressor shuts off and then the fan keeps blowing and it comes back on. That can jolt you awake. I know I've, I've done that before, but fan is my preference. A fan will keep me knocked out. Um, 
doing your bit, man. Saving a few bucks, uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> I do the same thing, not in a pool or anything like that. But if I see like if it's like a a spider or something like that, I usually catch it in like an envelope and take it outside, or on a piece of paper and take it out. I try not to. If I don't have to, I try not to like crush a bug. My cats do enough of that. They see a bug, they freaking torture it. Um, not saying everybody has to do that, because I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of bugs are pests. Like a lot of them are pests. Like a fly, smash it in a hot second. A mosquito, smash it. Um, a spider, I feel like a spider does a lot, so I try not to kill things that seem to do a lot. Um, but pests, gnats, all that stuff, I'll smash them in a hot second. I wouldn't try to save any of those out of pool. Um, I'm bug bias, I guess you could say. <laughs> it depends on the bug. Um, <clears throat> this is funny. This is a nice little start, nice little bang for the start of the thing. That was a terrible movie idea. Carl needs to know that was a bad movie idea. But it's one of those movies that's so bad it's good. You know what I mean? You ever watch a movie that was just, that, like, this is so terrible. I have to show all my friends. That was House of the Dead. When I saw that from... It, it was actually by Sega Studios or something like that. Like, well, when Sega made the movie from the House, the House of the Dead movie. That was one of the worst movies I think I've seen in my entire life. Like, that movie was so bad. I had to show friends. Now that I showed enough friends, I'm like, alright, I'm never watching this movie again. Um, just so bad. Not, n- none of the plots, none of the stuff made sense, man. It just was such a, if, if you ever get a chance, look up House of the Dead and watch that movie. It's one of the worst movies you'll ever see in your life. But yeah, that's one of those movies that's so bad you'll want to show your friends. Like, just the whole idea of it. It was just a, such a terrible idea. Uh, but this is good. This is a really good start to the series. I really enjoy I, I really enjoyed to the season two. Hope a lot more like this. I'm still... I know, like, uh, a lot of people say, well, Monkey News isn't that great. I kind of enjoy Monkey News because it was just so stupid. It was just such, such a, like, dinky thing and such a weird little thing to have on a podcast. I just thought it was funny that somebody will have something in, like, uh... And talk about the recent monkey, whatever monkey stuff is going on, the monkey news. I thought it was funny. Um, I know Carl was, like, fed up with it and, like, done. But I like that he kind of pushed through the story. Like, he gets pushed right through. No matter what they say, when it came to monkey news, he just keep on, like, talking. And I like how they would um bring back up, the, bring the past back up in the next episode. I really enjoyed that, too, in regards to, like, his monkey news story. They tied together really well. Also, I'm glad I listened to so many people in the comments who were saying I should skip. I'm glad I didn't skip anything because, like, the stuff ties together really well. I enjoy that. This is good. This is a nice start. Um, like I said in the beginning, guys, with uh, with work picking up so much and managers having to kind of pick up that slack with extra hours and stuff like that, I'm going to go to five days a week on this and five days a week on the Idi- Idiot Abroad. And the good thing is it's not so bad because the seasons are only, uh, what, I'm guessing all of my eight episodes? Yeah, I'm guessing all of my eight episodes. I, I'm going to look it up and see for sure. I'm pretty sure they're all eight episodes. Um, and these are, I don't know. The last one was 13 episodes, so I'm assuming each season is going to be like 13 episodes. I know seasons can change, but I'll take it, take a look. So it still won't take me forever. It's not like it's going to take me a year to get to all of them. It's just going to be like two days less. And when I can squeeze one in, I definitely will. But I do want to give myself some um, wiggle room with work and stuff like that. So I just want to give everybody a heads up that it'll be Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, I'll try to pepper in another Ricky Gervais or another, um, what do you call, Idiot Abroad. Who knows? I'll use where well, there's a will, there's a waste. I might actually be able to get them all out seven days a week, but we'll see. All right, guys, that is all for this one. Thank you guys for um, sticking around and watching all this stuff with me. I've been really enjoying myself. Um, I have been really thinking about doing like a a second channel just because I really want to keep this comedy. I like I like that this is, like, we mostly did 95% of our reaction to comedy anyway, and I really want to keep this a comedy channel because that's, that's what I really, really like, but I do still get a lot of emails and recommendations for random stuff, so I'm thinking about just doing a second channel just to get the random stuff over there um, and just keep it separate because I want to keep this um, comedy because I, I like the, the comedy part, and it's really important if you... Um, like, especially what I learned from, like, uh, YouTube, it's much better to stick to, like, a specific category because, like, doing something like me reacting to somebody jumping in the swimming pool can, like, tank the numbers and then you guys won't get suggested my stuff as much. Or other people who might like this will think they don't, they won't, they won't get it suggested because they don't really, um, YouTube doesn't know exactly what my channel is about. So they don't know who to suggest your content to. That's kind of like how it works. So I would definitely like to keep this comedy because I really enjoy the comedy and it'd be cool to get more people to, um, check out the channel. No reason to freaking confuse the the algorithm and everything by putting a bunch of random stuff. So, all right, guys, thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.